Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the El Obraje Wash Process Columbia from the barn. And there's the bag right there. And the barn based out of Berlin, Germany. And they're a coffee roaster that's featured a little more regularly on this channel, mostly due to the fact that we've been really impressed with the coffees that we have reviewed from them. Now, one thing you'll notice about this coffee is that it does have the Masterpiece sticker, which signifies that we subscribed to their Masterpiece series. And if you take a look on their website, then you'll probably have a pretty good idea of why we subscribed to this series. But truth be told, this is a coffee that I didn't necessarily expect to get or review, but I'm still looking forward to discussing it as this is a nice introductory to the barn's higher end coffee offerings. This right here is day 55. And recipe we went with for this coffee was the Barnes recipe, which is a 15.625 to 1 water to coffee ratio brewed at 94 degrees Celsius. And I like this one best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind. Roast profile for the barn, they say on their websites that they roast on a Nordic light scale, and they definitely do roast on the lighter side of coffees in general. This one right here is very light too for them. I wouldn't necessarily say it's an uber light or the lightest coffee that you've ever experienced, but by most standards, this is something that people would consider very light for European coffees. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 34, first impression, and it was a wonderful start to this coffee as it starts out very tropical, vibrant right from the onset. Now, here's where things get really fun because this coffee had the vibrancy of a natural processed coffee while still maintaining the clarity of a wash processed coffee. Truth be told, if you served this to me in a blind taste test, I would have a very difficult time distinguishing what the processing method is for this coffee because I'd be thrown off by how clear the coffee is and how vibrant the coffee is as there's so much bright tropical sweetness as well as a settled florality within the cup. Absolutely wonderful start. Really impressed by this coffee from that first try. Day 37, ran it through the Chemex, and it was every bit as clean and defined as it was with the V60, but slightly less vibrant, which was definitely a little bit of a drawback. Still super high on the tropicals in the near natural sense with an extremely defined pineapple aspect. As clear of an experience, not necessarily as good though. Still a nice day of this coffee. Day 40, adjusted to the Barnes recipe, and somehow it was better than the first couple of experiences. And that's typically what happens with the barn is I will run it through our standard recipe, the 16 to one at 205. And whenever I adjust to their recipe, it just does come out better as it's still super clean, but even more vibrant. And that's definitely to be expected as their recipe is a little bit more concentrated in general. Straight, clean pineapple juice in wild and pronounced abundance. Heavily tropical overall, that's the profile that I went with, the most defining profile, because it is so clear and distinct that it's the one that you think of the most when you're drinking this cup of coffee. So really like this coffee, very good on this day as well. Day 43, through the Chemex with the Barnes recipe, and for the first time, the cup of coffee hadn't felt as vibrant as it had in other days. Much of the wild tropical vibrancy is more tamed with it being a little less pronounced in general. Still a clean cup of coffee filled with an abundance of the pineapple acidity, the jasmine florality, as well as some additional tropical fruit characteristics, but still not quite as intense. So definitely didn't enjoy it as much through the Chemex. And on day 46, tried one more day through the Chemex just to kind of see if maybe it was a one-off and still it's not necessarily scoring the same sort of levels that it had been through the V60. Really high on the cleanliness, that was never going to change. And it doesn't really add any sort of clarity to it. The only thing the Chemex really does is it kind of strips away a little bit more of the super sweet tropical vibrancy within this coffee. So not necessarily the best. Super clean florality, tropicals in the cup, pineapple, sugary stone fruits, even a little bit of dark berry. So a lot more to take away from this coffee than just the really forward uh, pineapple and uh, floral aspects. Day 49, the coffee is back to its best with an absolutely lively florality component to this cup. Jasmine that they have listed on here, almost at times as pronounced as the lively pineapple-like aspect within this cup. It is accentuated by wonderful clarity. So the fact that this coffee has such a clean base, easily the cleanest uh, washed Colombian coffee I've ever had by a mile. It is almost straight pineapple juice at times. And it's not one of those coffees where I could say, oh my God, you could mistake it for pineapple juice. But if there was a coffee I've ever said that was as close to a liquid as one I've ever had, it has to be this coffee in terms of pineapple juice. So clear and similar in that sense. Additional complimentary tropical components, we'll touch on that here on this final day, which is day 52. And I really don't have too much left to say on this coffee because it's been mostly consistent with the only inconsistencies being, well, significant adjustments in terms of brew method. 
but it just really skyrockets in terms of vibrancy the moment you drink it. Wild array of tropical fruit flavors. Today, it kind of tastes like pineapple lifesaver gummies. The pineapple has been the most consistent and present note throughout the time drinking it. I've also come up with mango steam, banana, sweet orange, jasmine, mango, just an immense and wide array of fruit flavors complemented by some really lively floral components. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. And four level five. So let's go through those real quick. The cleanliness level five. Yes, this is the cleanest Colombian. I already said that, but it is a very, very clean Colombian coffee. It is a Kesha. So I guess in theory, it shouldn't be that surprising that I was as clean as it was. But even then, I feel like we've reviewed uh, and washed Colombian geshas before, or I know I've had dozens of them before, and none of them have ever necessarily come out as clean and defined as this one did. So definitely huge kudos to the barn for that one. One of the cleanest cups of coffee we've ever reviewed on this channel, honestly. Florality level five, and I touched on that briefly because I said at times the jasmine-like aspect to this coffee could be just as pronounced and defined as the pineapple component to it. So I feel like that's justified at the level five. Very vibrant florals in this cup of coffee as well. And I said, thinking to myself earlier, that if you ever had difficulty tasting jasmine, then at times this one right here really gave you a clear idea of what you could expect a jasmine cup of coffee to taste like. Citrus fruit, level five. Truth be told, since this is a relative tasting wheel, it's one of those things where you could push it all the way up to a level six, maybe even a level seven at times, given just how clean this cup of coffee is. It was a very vibrant pineapple within this coffee. So I think that that's justified. But in addition, I mentioned a very sweet orange component. I was able to get to it as well. And the other fruits I put up there at the level four and the level five mark, and they're definitely not as prominent and pronounced as the pineapple, but this coffee has so much depth and complexity to it that you could definitely see stuff like the mango, which I briefly discussed, and then the berry fruits on like darker berry aspects to it. I think that mango steam would also possibly, and banana also possibly listed as a berry fruit. So given just how many fruit factors there are and how strong they are within this coffee, you could justify all of those at level four or even higher marks, but I really want to focus on the fact that the citrus fruit was by far the most pronounced of them. Um, we'll touch on the body real quick. Um, it is a level one. It really had a light body, but that's not too surprising. It is a Gesha still, even if it is a Colombian coffee, not necessarily the heaviest body, but again, kind of to be expected. Now, the big three things we must discuss, the finish level four. I was thinking about this just now, and I don't think I've ever scored a wash processed coffee above a level four in terms of finish, because it's very rare with maybe the exception of Kenyan coffees that they have a very lasting finish. If I'm being super nitpicky about this coffee, I guess I could say that it finishes off kind of even, like it has a shorter finish, especially given how it is relative to the vibrancy within this coffee. But I, yeah, level four looks about perfect for me. Sweetness is the big one though, because I think you could honestly justify level five. I usually try to reserve that for like hyper sweet, overly sweet, ridiculously sweet cups of coffee. This one almost is though. I think I would be fine if I had scored this at a level five and kept it at level five because super sweet, right from start to finish. <sighs> level four, very high, very high side of level four. I feel like is possibly the best place for this coffee because again, it's very rare. I actually scored too many coffees at that level five for sweetness. Acidity level four, yeah, it's like right there at the level four mark, which is good because I always say as long as it's equal to or less than the sweetness, then I will really enjoy the coffee. This is a lighter profiled coffee in general, so not too surprising there. Sweetness being a little bit more pronounced or I guess abundant in the acidity makes for a really good tasting wheel for me. I really like this tasting wheel though. I think it's an excellent representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee, I mean, I've been kind of raving about it right from the start. I was really impressed and it translated well. I've been really impressed with the barn up to this point, their standard offerings, and I love the fact that their higher end offering very much lived up to the expectations going into it, especially given it wasn't a coffee that I necessarily wanted. I was really kind of blown away by it. And I can say that this is one of my four favorite coffees of the year to this point. It is easily my favorite wash processed Colombian coffee I've ever had by a significant distance. This one really left lasting impression on me so kudos to the barn i think that they're doing an excellent job and i'm very much looking forward to another coffee that we do have coming from them and i feel like you guys will be looking forward to that review as well type of person i would suggest this coffee to this is a little bit of an old school thing but i very much feel this way 
I loved Natural so much when they were clean. They were actually my favorite coffees. Once upon a time, this is a long, long time ago, Natural coffees used to be my favorite coffee because I loved the flavor that was coming from them. This is when they were significantly more clean than they are now. And I want to hammer home this point that it's not that I don't like Naturals for their vibrancy. I don't like Naturals for their lack of clarity usually. And that's why anaerobics are not necessarily my favorite coffees because they just throw the clarity out the window. You don't get much clarity from them. They're such murky cups of coffee. So that's why if you get a cup of coffee like this that is super vibrant to the extent that it has natural-like characteristics for the vibrancy while not sacrificing the clarity, then that makes for my ideal cup of coffee. And I feel like anybody that feels that way as well that really loves natural coffees when they are super clean, this is an excellent fit for you. One of the most tropical cups of coffee you could experience and you'll be pulling out so many fruit notes from this while maintaining that clarity and great sweetness and also great florality within this cup excellent cup of coffee overall. We kind of gushed about this one too much, so I think I'll leave this review at that. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, we'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the El Obraje, Wash Process Columbia from The Barn. Thank you for watching.